Chair recognizes Ms. Stansberry from New Mexico for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as a social scientist who's worked on climate and sustainability issues for many years, in fact, all of my career, I actually welcome the discussion today on sustainable investing. As we know, it's crucial to the future of our planet and also our economy. But obviously, that's not what this hearing is actually about. I've watched and listened today and seen as this hearing has devolved into yet another crusade in the political culture wars. But I, I am disappointed, Mr. Chairman, to see the use of this committee's precious time to air yet another dark money funded conspiracy laden attack on American freedom. But I'm surprised to see that in this case, it's an attack on the market itself. It's amazing to me to see the kinds of attacks we've seen on American freedom by the majority. Attacks on our bodies, banning books, and now we're talking about banning the way that businesses are able to invest their own capital and public bodies. But what's especially amazing about this is how radically out of touch it is with the American public. And in fact, what's particularly insane about these bans on ESG is how out of touch they are with voters themselves, including Republican voters. And Mr. Marshall, I know you've been at the forefront of this effort, but I wanna ask you, are you aware that the majority of Americans and Republican voters are actually opposed to ESG restrictions? I can tell you that I've had multiple comments from individuals throughout my state, the five million almost Alabamians that I represent. Thank you, Mr. Marshall. I'm going to direct your attention to this chart behind me. A recent poll that was released in Politico shows that the vast majority of Americans are actually opposed to restrictions on ESG. In fact, 63% of American voters overall and over 70% of Republican voters. 70% of Republican voters are actually opposed to restrictions on ESG. But it's not just the public, it's American businesses as well. Corporations, investment firms. Mr. Marshall, are you aware that the vast majority of American businesses are also opposed to these restrictions? Congressman, would you like me to be able to answer the first question that you asked me? Mr. Marshall, are you aware that the vast majority of American businesses are also opposed to these restrictions? I'm going to answer the first question that you cut me off on, which is Thank that is. Mr. Marshall, around. in fact, Mr. Marshall, uh, media outlets such as Fortune, Forbes, The Washington Post have recently published articles warning American investors about these attacks on ESG and explaining why they are bad for business. Now let's talk about why they're opposed, because profitability fundamentally depends on risk management. And Mr. Freericks, you know this because you're an asset manager. And corporate America understands the real and significant risks posed by global climate change and the other social and environmental factors that are presented as part of ESG factors and data as they're presented in investing. So my question is, why on earth is the GOP waging in a war on ESG, especially when it's so completely unpopular with American corporations, the market, investors, American voters. In fact, 19 states have actually moved under extreme governors and state officials to try to ban ESG investing. We're talking about legislation, executive orders, and the very lawsuit that we're here discussing today. So my question is, why is this happening? And I think, Mr. Freericks, as you've indicated, I think in your testimony, we have to follow the money. And the reality is, is that this is a well-coordinated and political attack. Is that not true, Mr. Freericks? It would seem that the fossil fuel industry is leading a charge here. Uh, we had talks about uh, how banks are muscling companies. Uh, we have seen that. We have seen banks, muscling, mus or banks being muscled. Legislation in Texas is muscling banks to invest in the fossil fuel industry. Banks like to be diversified, and if they decided that they wanted to invest in renewable resources, like biofuels from Iowa, or wind turbine blades from Ohio, or solar panels being installed in Arizona, they would be punished for that. That's the real shame here. 
Right, so ESG has become another boogeyman in the culture wars. This is not about fiscal responsibility. You know, it's evident we're sitting here in the very week that we're debating a potential default on the American debt ceiling. And yet the GOP is claiming that this is about fiscal responsibility and fiduciary, fiduciary responsibility to shareholders and the public. That is not what this is about. It is a well-funded, dark money-funded culture war attack, not only on the American economy, but on the American people. And with that, I yield back.